Now let's talk a little bit about the scientific method. Now the scientific method is an organized procedure scientists use for investigation. Now do know that even though here on the screen we have six steps for the scientific method, the scientific method doesn't always follow this exact path. But for sake of classroom and understanding what it is, um, we are putting it in a step-by-step -step process. So first, for step one, we're going to state the problem or ask our question. Now this is what we would basically want to research. For step two, you want to gather information. Now we want to research topics to find out what's already known. Chances are there's lots of information already discovered about your question or your problem. So it's important to go back and research all those other experiments. For step three, we're going to form a hypothesis. Now a hypothesis is an educated guess or a prediction. Everybody has hypotheses. You probably have many going on in your head right now. Um, if something happens, then that will result, is usually the form of a hypothesis. For step four, we're going to collect data. Now for this, we're going to perform an experiment. This is usually the fun part of science and is usually doing the experiments. And then for step five, we're going to analyze the data. We want to report that data in words or charts or um, some sort of visual so people can see what sort of data that you have. Now in step six, this is where you draw your conclusion. You're going to explain your data and results. Now it's important for step five and six, a lot of times you might have to redo, or even for step four, you might have to go back and recollect your data, analyze it again, maybe draw new conclusions. Sometimes it doesn't really match up to what your problem was, your stated hypothesis. So why are the results that do not confirm a hypothesis still important? Why don't you think on that and as we flip to the next slide. Now what makes a good experiment? Well, there's a lot of good parts to experiments, a lot of things that make it good. In order for an experiment to be a true experiment, we need definitely have to have variables. Now a variable is the factor in an experiment that changes. We have two important variables that we really want to make sure we, we kind of control for in an experiment. The first one is the independent variable. Now this is the variable that is, that is changed on purpose to see how it affects something else. So if we were growing plants and we wanted to see if light really affects plants or not, the independent variable would be that light. That's something that you can change on purpose to really see how it affects plant growth. Now we do have another variable it's called the dependent variable. Now this is what changes and is what, me what is measured. So your dependent variable is dependent upon your independent variable. So in my, um, my example with plants, if I wanted to see how fast it, or how much it grows by light, light would be my independent variable, whereas the growth is the dependent variable. I can't change the growth of the plant. I can only change the light or the types of light or light intensity or something about that light is what I can change. I cannot change the plant growth. So in this, ex uh, this experiment that we have here, Darla wants to see if tomato plants grow faster if fertilizer is added to their soil. So she takes three plants and places them on her porch. One plant is given plain water and the other two are given the same amount of water, but with fertilizer added. Now what are the independent and dependent variables in this experiment? Go ahead and write that down in your notes. Now, if you had said for the independent variable that fertilizer was the independent, that would be correct. Because Darla really wants to see if they're going to grow faster with fertilizer. Now what would be the dependent variable? Well, this is probably going to see, uh, be growth. So independent is what Darla changed. The growth is dependent upon that, uh, that first variable, that growth, uh, I'm sorry, that fertilizer. We also need to have constants in our experiment. Now constants are factors that do not change when the other variables are changed. 
So for example, a constant would be something that we considered, um, let's say for this one, we want all the same tomato plants. Now a control is a standard to which the test results can be compared. Usually this is a normal situation, something where um, something that has a normal kind of way about things. We do not add the actual variable to a control. So it's the way the normal things happen. So in our experiment with Darla, once again, what are the what's the control in Darla's experiment? What are the constants in her experiment? Go ahead and write that down. Now for the control in Darla's experiment, perhaps the control would be that we have a normal tomato plant without fertilizer. That would be our control. That's the one that we want to test against. We want to compare the others against our normal conditions. How about the constants? What might be some things that we keep constant in this? I mentioned one earlier. Maybe we want to keep the same tomato plants. Maybe we want to keep the same amount of light the, uh, these plants receive. How about the same soil? The same pots? These are the same things we don't really want to mess with. Because if we mess with these, these might become other variables, which then might change our dependent variable. We really don't want that. Now it's important that we repeat the trials. So repeated trials are how many times you repeated the same set of conditions. In Darla's case, maybe we want to repeat it over and over about maybe four or five times to see if the same results come out um, with the fertilizer. But we want to keep it exactly the same. So repeated trials are just repeated trials. We do the same experiment over and over again. Finally, we have two types of data that come out of this. We have qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative data is descriptive data. This is usually the data in the form of words. This deals with qualities of things that you can observe, such as color, texture, smell. So quality, qualitative data. We're talking about quantitative data. We're talking about quantities. So we're really talking about numerical data, the data in the form of numbers. So maybe with things like this, these are measurements, maybe length, temperature, volume, mass, how many, how much of something. So qualitative data deals with qualities. Quantitative data deals with quantity. 